for time for member statement the member from wellington halton hills mr speaker once again this week we have seen evidence that the liberal government is prepared to say literally anything to try to hang on to power in recent days the premier's claims that our proposal to phase out their cap and trade program and replace it with a carbon pricing program in line with what the trudeau government is requiring and which would return all of the revenues to Ontarians, would cost more and would not be as effective in reducing carbon emissions, were shown to be patently false by the respected national magazine, Maclean's. In fact, the Maclean's article demonstrated that the People's Guarantee will do the opposite. The study by economist Trevor Tombe suggests our plan would, in time, leave Ontario households better off than what the Liberals say and reduce emissions more in Ontario than under their cap-and-trade program. This leads to another important environmental issue, that being our responsibility to protect and preserve our groundwater today and for future generations. Over and over again, I have repeated my position on this issue, including my view that we need to do more to improve the recycling rates of empty water bottles and other single-use plastic beverage containers. How is this best achieved? It appears that each province has its own approach with varying degrees of success. I'm told that the province of Manitoba's Recycle Everywhere program has been impressive in dramatically improving recycling rates. It deserves a good hard look in the context of Stewardship on Ontario's ongoing consultation with the Blue Box program. I'm also aware that the Town of Erin's Public Space Recycling Project, uh, Town Council and staff deserve credit for working with the Canadian Beverage Association. Thank you. And I know with the enthusiastic support of the people of Wellington Halton Hill, this effort will lead to success. Thank you, sir. For the rest of the Thank I, you. I stand, you sit. The member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And my, my member statements on gas prices. I like to talk about something in this House that has been bothering me for a long time. Something I've spoken out against, and new, new Democrats are working to put an end to. The issue of people getting gouged at gas pumps across Ontario. Mr. Speaker, it's not hard to see why residents feel. They are being gouged. They're paying around $1.17 for gas in Niagara Falls right now, and you usually go to St. Catharines and it's 10 cents cheaper. We also see that gas prices continue to rise even when the barrel of gas remain relatively low. We know that the price of oil crashed, and yet we never saw the same reduction in the price of gasoline. New, new Democrats are going to do something about this. We put forward a bill to try and deal with these prices, and this gouging has to stop once and for all. I hope the Liberals and the PCs will support our bill and finally offer some relief for residents. I have said many times the fuel industry needs transparency and, when possible, consistency, yet we don't see that. Instead, we see big companies doing whatever they can to make a profit off the good people of Ontario. My message is clear to the Premier. As families begin to travel during the Christmas holidays, give them a gift they can all enjoy. Support our bill and stop the gouging of Ontarians at the pump. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Speaker. Our statements, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud to be part of a government that is supporting cycling and cycling infrastructure. Our government knows that hopping on your bike is great for your health for congestion on our roads, and for the environment. My riding of Davenport has the second most commuter cyclists in the city who use their bikes for commuting and for fun. But yet it doesn't have enough infrastructure in place. That's why I was so pleased when earlier this week the Minister of Transportation and the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport joined me in my riding of Davenport to announce the recipients of funding from the Ontario Municipal Commuter Cycling Program and that our government is more than doubling the program's funding. To help my riding of Davenport, the City of Toronto alone is receiving $25.6 million that will be used to help deliver their 10-year cycle network plan and to expand the Bike Share Toronto system with up to 300 new bikes, share location at 3,000 bikes and 6,000 docks. This will mean that people in Davenport will benefit from more bikes, bike lanes, and safer, safer cycling infrastructure to get where they need to go all across the city. More cycling infrastructure and expansion of the Bike Share program will encourage people to cycle more often, improve safety, and provide more travel options. I'm also hopeful that this money and that the City of Toronto will update their project list to include the much-desired bridge to Earlscourt Park. 
By kicking our funding into high gear, we will continue to keep our province to make cycling a safer, more attractive Thank option you. for people in Davenport. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Their opportunity is an organization based in the Oshawa part of my riding and provides low-income families within the region of Durham with the financial means to enroll their children in local sports programs. Through their involvement, Speaker, in these programs, young men and women can develop the confidence, social skills, and healthy lifestyle attainable through sport. And getting involved in these activities encourages uh, social interaction and contributing to a greater sense of community identity and social cohesion. Through the programming and financial system provided by their opportunity is meeting the needs, Speaker, of uh, children and youth in the broader community and contributing overall towards continuing to ensure that the region of Durham is a safe, active and caring community. Speaker, I'm proud that uh, their opportunity is providing the leadership, opportunities, positive role models and programs that improve young people's quality of life and as a result increasing their chances for achievement and success, and I'd like to commend the board and Randy Gill for all their outstanding work and the opportunity that they're providing young men and women in the region of Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Very good. Further member statements, the member from Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. Since winter arrived, the good people of Gogama and Metagami First Nation in my riding have been faced with almost daily power outages. Last weekend, the power went off and on about 30 times. Monday night, power goes off at 9.20 p.m., gets back on in, in, during the night at 1.30. Tuesday, the power goes off at 5.45 p.m., is restored at, four, at 10, but only for four short hours, because Wednesday morning at 2 a.m., the power goes off, and you guessed it, last night, it powered on and off twice. Our liaison at Hydro One sends me pictures of snow and trees, as if this is somewhat unusual in Northern Ontario. Speaker. Electricity is not a luxury. Many people in Gogama and Metagami do not have a wood stove to heat their house. They do not have a power generator to power up their furnace. Some residents are on oxygen concentrators to breathe. They worry that their backup uh, oxygen will actually run out because they have been out of power for so many times. They are frightened. For them, it's a life and death situation. What happens to... Uh, the meat in your freezer when you've had a successful hunt, but your freezer keeps thawing out. How are you supposed to cook your fruitcakes or your tourtières when there's no reliable power, How, let alone get ready for Christmas? Our electricity system is not reliable. Thank for nothing, Hydro One. The residents are fed up. They are frustrated. They are angry. All they want for Christmas, Speaker, is a reliable energy system. Thank you. <laughs> for the member statements, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to uh, thank the Minister of Finance for including protection for victims of domestic violence in his uh, Budget Measures Act, Bill 177. And he is doing that in this legislation by ensuring that uh, innocent co-insured are not penalized because their spouse committed an illegal act. And I've been trying to help three women in Ontario whose husbands uh, sadly burned down their homes, and yet they couldn't collect insurance. And uh, I hope that this measure gets passed in this uh, Bill 177 so that we will stop penalizing abused uh, women twice because they were victims of this loophole and that their husbands, who were in uh, three cases all criminally found guilty of uh, arson and assault, yet the spouse could not collect insurance. So this will close that loophole once and for all and ensure that this practice of discrimination against abused women stops in Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member's statement, the member from Scarborough, Rouge River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, education is one of the most important services that the province uh, provides its residents. During the past few months, I attended several community meetings with World Aid Toronto Catholic 
District School Board Trustee Gary Tanwan and TCDSB parent council leaders on their discussion regarding school closure. Specifically, the three schools in my riding of Scarborough Rouge River that are under review, St. Gabriel Lanaman, St. Rene Gopal, and the Divine Infant Schools. The frustration, anger expressed by the parents and students of these schools were enormous. The last thing that the parents want to have their local school closed and move their children to a school outside the community. The uncertainty surrounding the future of the school is further exacerbating the situation when frustrated parents, uncertain of the future of their local schools, are making the drastic move and finding alternate to the Catholic schools. Mr. Speaker, I'm very happy to report on the November 16th, I, along with the many parents and students deputed at the TCDSB, and convincing them to, to save the three schools from chopping block. I want to thank the school trustee, Gary Tanon, all the parents and students who worked hard to save our school. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Brother, member statements, man, from Trinity Spadine. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today uh, in the House to celebrate our second annual Trinity Spadina Outstanding Business Award. Many ridings in Ontario have one or two business improvement areas, or BIAs. My riding of Trinity Spadina has 18 very active BIAs. My family had a small business and I, where I worked as a part-time staffer um, during my school years. And I know the challenge and the hard work put in the, uh, by business owners. Businesses like Wurzman Art Supply in Chinatown have been supporting artists and students alike for over 60 years. The Horseshoe Tavern, a landmark for, for live music in, in Toronto, celebrated 70th anniversary this week and it was recognized by CBC, Toronto Star, Toronto Sun, and Cable Boss 2-4. Mazak Kisadia in Liberty Village recently won the Premier's Award recognizing their dedication to sustainable farming. The CN Tower, Resta Pasta, and 17 other businesses in total received the Trinity Spadina Outstanding Business Award. Business are community hubs. They provide opportunities for Ontarians to grow and thrive. Our BIA awards are not only, are not only an opportunity for business to be recognized, but also a platform for networking and learning best business practices. I want to thank them for the contribution they, 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 they provide to our, the vibrancy of our community, job creation and the innovation that they bring forward. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak about a town council meeting that was held last night in the municipality of Kincardine. During the meeting, a senior manager from the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change made a presentation on renewable energy and wind turbines. Although the ministry seems to acknowledge that there are health complaints surrounding many industrial wind turbines, there still appears to be little action being taken in response. I, along with many members of the community, still have concerns regarding the response from the ministry to serious health complaints from those living close to industrial wind turbines. The ministry acknowledged in their presentation that there are health complaints from both tonal noise and infrasound. Yet, for some reason, the ministry still refuses to test for infrasound. Councillor Andrew White pointed out that currently, the wind proponent does its own testing, while no one from the ministry oversees it. He went on to say, and I quote, I see lots of potential for conflict of interest here. How can anyone trust the testing? And even worse, the ministry official admitted at this time, there is no legislative requirement that the company publicly posts their results. It's just an expectation of the ministry. We saw this past week, Speaker, what happens when the Liberal government blindly trusts a company without government oversight. Ratepayers are overcharged to the tune of more than six, $260 million in eligible costs. So, Speaker, Thank you. I would like to take this opportunity to call on the ministry to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. It's